Let's start with the ground rules, Jonathan. What what is the point of investing, of ESG investing? Is it superior re re returns, or is it to be able to join the global community of, of the virtuous, uh, of the people that, that, that care about their actions and, and, and leaving the world a better place? Which is it? It's about creating excellent companies that focus on operational efficiency, empowering their workers, uh, protecting the way that they operate from an environmental perspective so that they're efficient in the use of inputs like water, and thinking about risks down the line that might come from things like climate change and changing regulatory expectations. So ultimately, we believe that ESG can help you to create strong investment returns. Now, there are investors who have a lot of exclusions on their investment products and who have other objectives. They're looking for impact. That's not what ESG is. ESG is about looking at financially material, environmental, social, and governance considerations, building them into an investment process, engaging with companies to achieve them, and helping those companies to be even greater as a result. Vivek, is the, uh, is the jury in on whether you can succeed in superior returns from doing this? Do you have, does anyone have numbers that, that, that say one thing or the other, that you actually over, uh, you outperform or underperform a, 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 what you do, You're doing something based on excellence and uh, corporate excellence that has nothing to do with these other things, which, which probably come from running a great company. All those other things fall in line without you having to say it up front. That's exactly right, Joe. And I think that, look, both sides can cherry pick their data. But certainly in the last year, the data are pretty clear that ESG has really underperformed other sectors like the U.S. energy sector. But I think that the point is more fundamental here. One of my issues is the coordination amongst different firms in the asset management industry. All right. Take this group called the Climate Action 100 Plus Network. This is a group that boasts that it represents over 50 percent of global assets under management, over 60 trillion dollars represented in that group. And they coordinate to tell firms to cut emissions. Part of cutting emissions is cutting productions. Well, the problem is that when you have over 50% market share representing entities get together, decide to coordinate on an action like cutting production, and then prices spike at the pump as a result, we have a word for that in this country. It's called an antitrust violation. And the funny part about this movement, Joe, and not a lot of people talk about this, is how this movement, the ESG movement, applies its standards so selectively in the United States and Western Europe without saying a peep in China. And, and the best example of this, I thought, was actually BlackRock and State Street and Vanguard voting in favor of new directors at Exxon. After those new directors took their seats at Exxon, Exxon cut oil production targets by over 20 percent from their prior forecasts. But the people who are at the front of the line to pick up the projects that Exxon drops are none other than PetroChina. And if you want the cherry on top, you look at who one of the largest shareholders of PetroChina is. It is none other than BlackRock. So a big part of this is a deep-seated conflict of interest in the ESG movement itself. The firm's effectively saying ESG for thee, China for me. And that's not just bad for our geopolitics. It's also bad for the environment because U.S. natural gas, for example, is 40 percent cleaner for the environment than Russian natural gas because we don't have methane leakage over here. So yeah. I think this movement fails on every prong from prices to investment all the way down to even the environment itself. Jonathan, I just want to think a bit objectively. Oh, if people laugh when I say that. But when I do think about it uh, uh, objectively, you don't want governments picking winners and losers in, in industry. That never works. They're horrible at it. But what you really have here are, are high-minded managers doing the same thing, picking wind and solar against fossil fuels. So, you know, take that to... to Extend it to other things. I know it's the free market. You can you have to market these funds. People have to say, yes, I want it. I'm going to do it. And, and it makes sense to me. And I want to be there. So it's different. It's not corporatism in that way. But why would you think you'd be any more skilled at picking the eventual winners in any industries than letting the market uh, decide itself? It, it just seems like it's a, a fool's errand to start with. 
Well, the market is a collection of different opinions. Uh, Vivek, you know, has an opinion about what he thinks is going to happen in energy markets. We may have a different opinion, right? That's that's how the market ends up with a price. Price discovery comes from a series of active choices. And those choices can consider various different scenarios around what might happen from an energy transition perspective. If you look at the IEA scenario for net zero, that sees about a 6% decline in natural gas demand through 2030. They could be wrong, but that's a scenario that says maybe we don't need to ramp up production over the next decade. Certainly over the next uh, three to five years, clearly there is going to be a need, particularly in the U.S., where we have got high-quality operators for natural gas to play an important part in uh, displacing Russian exports. But, but that debate happens every day in the market through active managers who are deciding who they want to own at what price and what scenario they believe is going to take place. And what I think is really important is that we don't just sort of you know, fight against an acronym for the sake of it, that we look at how this works in practice. You know, the, the, when we engage with a company, we do it as an individual investor. We're not collaborating with a whole group of others with some view about setting annual production targets. If you listen to the current uh, administration, right, they are calling on Wall Street to stop asking uh, companies to return capital to shareholders. Right? If, if, if that doesn't strike you as, uh, as socialism, I don't know uh, what does. Right? We are on the side of saying, what is good corporate governance right now? It's about disciplined capital allocation. And we've been burned in the past by the oil and gas sector deploying capital into sectors and projects that didn't earn a strong return. So ultimately, our role is to protect our investors and clients and to make sure that when we choose to invest in a company, we think that there's a strong free cash flow generating business model that's going to be able to develop a nice return for them.